Hello, boys and girls. How are we today? Thank you for coming into Steve-O's world. You're in my world right now. You're in my world. It's a beautiful place to be, isn't it? Little heads up. Little heads up. I always tell you guys, be happy, be strong, because we got to keep getting it on. And the way to be strong is be strong as an ox and eat the ox. Now, if you don't eat the ox and you're eating other things like high carb intake, what will start happening, your body will start to malfunction, okay? The more carbs you ingest, the worse it gets, okay? Your, your mind and your body will start to deteriorate, okay? All bad things will start happening, okay? You will not be strong enough to stay with old Steve-O and hunt and fish and work bees and take the trash out for Miss Daisy. You won't be able to do it, okay? Now, let, let me give you a perfect example of someone that is in this is in this position and situation and here it is right here this is a warped uh, mentally and physical physically human being and here it is right here and I know I may bunch up some panties I may this may give you a wedgie I don't know I really don't care uh, this part white man part plains indian man does not speak with forked tongue okay so here it is there it is guys there it is right there wow 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 look at the face look at those eyes okay do i need to say more do i need to say more okay so go down the path, guys. Follow Stevo down the path to longevity. Yes. It's the way to go. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, guys, spring is sprung here in sunny Florida. Uh, look at that sun right there. Look at the sun. Don't look at it too much now. And another thing too, guys, I wanted to tell you, I've been getting reports I've been getting some reports, and I don't know if this is, I don't think it's a good thing, but it is what it is, okay? Uh, I'm getting reports of people that watch more than, say, most of my videos are like 20, 30 minutes long. And if you watch more than one of my videos a day, I'm getting reports of people going blind. They're actually going blind watching my videos. So, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. Uh, it's just hard to say, but it is what it is, and this is the reports I'm getting. All right. But anyway, I want to show you. I got my little test jar set up right here, right behind you, right behind you. And this will give you an indication how things are going. Uh, what is the date today in sunny Florida? This happens to be Thursday. February 22 at 9:34, and let's see what our temperature is today right now let's see what that is uh-huh oh oh what is it right now it's gonna get it's gonna be clear today and 74 degrees it was 41 degrees when I got up this morning here but as you can see, the bees are already. This is a nice little setup here. I mean, it's just a little cheap pan, uh, a, a jar of one to one. There's no essential oils in that. But when I make up a big tub, I put a little essential oils in it. But for my test feeder thing that I set out here, they would not be hitting this if, if we had a good source of uh, nectar coming in. 
So this is a nice way to indicate, you know, uh, what's happening. You need to be peeking in your hives. These hives can all crash. If you, even though you left food on them in the fall, you're coming into spring, they could have gobbled up all that. Yeah, they could have gobbled up all of that. So, anyway, I've got... Let's see, uh, Sunday I have some units going out of here, and, and Tuesday I got some units going out of here. And I don't know where I'll be. I, I won't know till 310 how many queens came back from their mating flight on those walkaways that I did. And 310 will investigate that. Uh, so, Sunday, this coming Sunday, I have a pickup, and then Tuesday I have a pickup. So the day before that, I will back my truck in and prep the hot, shrink wrap, get everything ready to go, put them on the truck. I'll park them in the shade until customer pickup time. Yeah. So the girls are drinking tons of syrup, guys. I mean, it's just... Here's, here's... I mean, the weaker ones... The weaker ones uh, aren't so much. This is a this is a cell jobby here, but uh, I have stood the bricks up on the ones I'm going to sell, and this one I need to investigate because they're not sucking it down as much. I don't know what's up, but here's one here. Uh, it says check three eight on it. That could have had a cell in it. The deal on that. So yeah, we've got more to sell. And then it's going to be build up, build up, build up, build up after that. Okay, guys, I had a quite a heavy mite load here um, coming into spring, so I'm treating. I've got my first round of uh, Amitraz on them. And they'll get three rounds of Amitraz towel. And uh, that should knock the heck out of them. But something else you can do, especially for the high beetles... Go down and get you a sack of this stuff here. Uh, I'm on my second second year of this product here. It's called uh, Scott's Grub X Season Long Grub Killer. Okay, I'm throwing this under. See these grubs here? These white grubs. That's basically what they're going for. But the high beetle grubs they bore into the ground. So I'm, I cast this, I put a rubber glove on, and I take this stuff and I just cast it under the hives. A few handfuls under the hives. And, uh, yeah, it should uh, knock them down quite well. I've noticed I don't have near the beetles I did before. There's a fellow in South Florida that's doing this where I picked it up on. Actually, a YouTube channel, and I don't, I don't remember the dude's name, but anyway, I... I like this idea, so I'm starting to adopt it, and and this is the product I'm using. So uh, it can't hurt, that's for sure. I mean, it was a little pricey. I forget what I paid for it, but it's Scott's Grub X. Uh, I think it's worth a go. I wouldn't stick your nose in that bag. I mean, it's, I can smell it. It's pretty strong odor coming out of that bag. So, anyway, we're into spring. Uh, get into your colonies early, guys. I mean, because don't fiddle fart around until you see hundred dollar swarms flying off. No, uh, if you're if you can pick up your hives if, if, for, if you have screen bottoms you can tilt the hive back and peek underneath and see if there's swarm cells hanging down from the bottom of those frames that's where they like to put them on the bottom and so anyway as you're rifling through but get in as soon as you can as soon as you see drones guys as soon as you see drones it's time to rock and roll get your equipment unless you don't care say you're a hobbyist and you don't really care uh hey let them fly off but you're gonna use, you're gonna lose a good per percentage of those bees in that colony so what i always did as a and i don't do it anymore i don't do the honey game anymore i'm just doing selling nooks um 
but I would bounce my colonies. I'd make four moves a year and bounce them from crop to crop. I never fed bees, but what I did do, like in the fall, and each move, I always moved my bees with, I had back in the day, I had 10 frame equipment, and I had 10 frame uh, shallow supers, and I had enough, enough supers for four for every hive I had. So whatever hive I had, I had to count up four more. It's just, I wouldn't do it again like that, uh, no, I think I would run all eight frame equipment if I was going to do it again and palletize and get into commercial operation. I would personally, myself, would run all eight frame equipment. I would make up special uh, eight frame, four, four hives to a pallet because I would be moving them with a forklift, whether it be a donkey, a homemade rig, or a bobcat, whatever. I would make up for four hives per pallet for eight frame. That's the way I would do it. Just, just me. And I would have supers. I'd have all the same equipment, whether it be a honey super or a brood chamber. They'd all be eight frame deeps, everything, everything. There's some guys out there even running mediums. The whole operation, I've seen this movie, all mediums, the entire operation, mediums, in eight, I've seen the operation in eight, and I've seen it done in tens, ten frame. But with eight, your nest is tightened up a little bit. Normally, on a ten frame box, they're just blowing the outsides with honey and pollen anyway. Uh, so with an eight, it's tightened up slightly, but the the lifting the lifting part as you age the lifting part gets to be uh, an issue. Keep that in mind. You just building up, building up, building up. You're a young guy. You're 22 years old. You're building up. I'm gonna say I'm gonna be a commercial beekeeper. I love this line of work, but be thinking down the road. I mean. When you hit my age, 74, it's a different ball game, okay? And so be thinking of that. But if it was for me, as many years as I've been doing this, it's well over 60 years I've been doing this. I would, with what I know now, uh, I would go with eight frame equipment deeps. One box for everybody. This mix match of mediums and shallows and yada yada on and on and mix matching eight frames with 10 frame equipment. It gets to be a cluster monkey hump session. That's all it is. It, it, it just, there's too much going on there for me because my brain's not that big, guys. I don't want to get confused. Yes. Wow, spring is, is starting to happen, guys. I'm telling you, it is, everything's starting to come in. Yeah, it's warming up. We're getting still cool nights, but it's, it's coming on. And I like getting rid of my bees and stuff and do the major part of the splitting in the spring. And then it's just kind of maintenance as you go on. But just hard, uh, heavy humping of bees and, 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 and uh, for me, uh, harvesting honey all summer in 90, 90 degree heat with 100% humidity. It's just a killer. You've got to be in pretty good top condition to do this line of work. Be thinking of that. Stop the smoking. Stop the drinking. Stop the carbs. Convert to an all carnivore diet. This is how we're designed, and I don't give a rat's ass what anyone tells you in big pharma land. These people are corrupt to the core. They want you fat. They want you sick. Do not listen to these people. Steve-O's here to tell you. Old Dr. Steve-O, and I don't have a degree. No, I don't even have a professional degree in beekeeping. You don't need one. No, you don't need one. It's just to, we're getting on the common sense gravy train is what we're doing. 
stop listening to these fools. Your life will get better, I'm telling you right now. And I want to show you something here. All right. If you're paying attention to your bees and you are coming into spring and you want to jump in just before they start making the swarming peanuts, don't let them get triggered into thinking we have to swarm now, okay? Unless you don't care. If you don't care, heck with it. But you can take those bees instead of watching $100 bills go bye-bye and flying off into the swamps, into the swamp. You could go and harvest those bees, harvest those resources, set up a nuke, right? As soon as you see the drones and start making them. All right, now, say your timing is off. You're working 14 jobs and umpteen hours a day and you don't have time to get in there and the bees are getting going faster than you are and you start having a swarm. You come home and you walk out back and you hear the place buzzing with bees uh, years ago, they used to swarm and, and swarm down low. I mean, they would be swarming down six foot. They'd find a branch and be swarming six foot. But anymore, see that big pine? Years ago, I haven't lost any swarms in a long time, knock on wood. But they used to get in the top of that pine right there, that yellow pine. And that big yellow pine right there, that you get the top of that sucker. I don't know what's up with that, guys. Just when you think you're going to figure bees out, yeah, right. They're going to throw you a curveball every time. Every time, I'm telling you. So, screw that. I don't want my bees on the top of this pine tree. I'm going to collect my resources before all that happens. But say it does happen. Right? You're working, like I said, you're working 14 jobs and you, you just can't get in there. Build yourself one of these. Okay? Build yourself one of these. And here it is. This is Steve-O's version of a shop, of a, uh, a B, BVAC. BVAC is what this is. And just so happened, I found this at my grocery store. I found this... I found this tub and this tub, they were side by side, and I have not seen these two together since. I've not seen them in there since this. And I got to looking at that, and I said, whoa, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The light bulb came on. I saw this tub and this tub, and they were sitting beside one another like this in, in, on the shelf. And all of a sudden, I said to myself, self? This could be a BVAC catching box. Now in here, I got a couple of pool noodles, okay? And I wanted a lot of ventilation here. Because some of these swarms are really big, okay? I didn't want to suffocate my bees. So what I do, once I capture my bees, I take this, this box here, out of this big tub here, put that lid on. I have a plug that goes in that, just a wooden plug that goes in there. This gets thrown in the cab right next to me, inside the AC cab. So I had a cutter here. I think this is two inch. I don't remember, two inch. So I put three holes, two holes, three holes, two holes, as you can see here. All right. I put one hole there. That is a two inch coupling, guys. That's just a standard Schedule 40 coupling. That goes in there, you see? This goes on here. These handles come up, click up. That's the beauty of that. Put a wooden plug in here after you're done, and you can take this out and put in a cab. Put this in the back of the truck, tie it down so it don't blow out because it's light. And I put a two inch hole in this one and put another two inch cap in here. I didn't silicone it here. This just comes through the hole. I had to rat tail this out a little bit so this would fit in tight. So yeah, I just put this in here so it's flush. This is the inside, you see. And then I put a big jobber dauber 
of silicone glue on that. This falls right into that hole, just like that. All right, I've got a very cheap six gallon shop back here. Okay, actually it was given to me. That has the adapters on it. This is the one that came with the unit. It's just a, it's just a pressure fit, okay? This is the suction, this is the discharge. This is the suction. And I need to tighten it up a little bit to go in there. So all I did was put a little tape on it. You'll notice here that none of this stuff has gaskets on it. You don't need it. None of this has a gasket on it for an airtight scenario. You don't need it. That goes in there. That centers itself up. Bada bing. Like so. Now, I was fortunate enough to find these two that were compatible. So that inner, inner box lid fits up underneath there. So this drops straight in, see, into that hole. This extends beyond this lid and drops into that hole. So now we want to suck up the bees. So you've got a swarm that's close by. If you bought yourself, say you had a swarm. I'm not getting on ladders anymore, guys. If that, if that, if that swarm is up there 15 feet in the air, I'm not crawling around on ladders. To me, falling off a ladder and breaking my neck is not worth a little box of bees sitting up in the middle of that tree, no. But say there is, say it's 10 feet up and you don't want to get on a ladder. Get you some hose. This is the suction hose for this vac here, right here. Actually, it would go right in that hole. And that's the discharge hole. It would go in here if you're going to normally suck this thing, right? Use it in your shop. But now, what we're doing, this, this goes in here, just like so. This is the suction, right here. So what you would do, add extra hose to this. Buy yourself some extra hose if you think you're going to... You could have 20 foot of this hose. It don't matter and stick it on a duct tape it to a stick and you could go right up there and you could suck all them bees out of that swarm right into this box. Now you're done, you're done with all this action. All you gotta do is, is pull this, pull this out. Take this off, have your wooden plug ready. And I put, you put the pool noodles in there so the bees have something to land on and land, crawl all over. And, and they're not bouncing and slamming into the bottom of this container. This suction on this is very light. Do not use, and this is the reason too, I don't have gaskets. So it's, you're, losing, you're losing air, right? You're losing air out this edge here, which is fun. You want just a little bit of suction. You could just take it take it like this the way I do it to test it come up to your t-shirt and you just barely want to be able to suck it on your t-shirt if this thing is slamming to your body no you're going to kill bees you don't want to kill bees you want to nice gently be hauled into that inner bucket and the way you do that is adjust it now if you're finding you've got too much suction Make you a little valve here, drill another hole, take another piece of plastic, put it on here, put a bolt here to where it's like a shuttle valve, to where you can move it open. That, that's another way to do it, to relieve the suction action on this vacuum. Adjust it to where you have, now I don't need to do that with this. It just happened to work out perfectly. This air, this, we're losing air here around this, uh, it's just the right perfect vacuum action for that. So this whole setup is very cheap. You, you probably already got your vac, shop vac for your shop, cleaning messes up. So this little whole thing here, I see these vacs, they just on and on expensive as heck. No, 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 I threw this together in a day. The thing that took the most time was just siliconing those little eighth inch screens on there.
and I would use eighths. Get yourself, I wouldn't put window screen on these. Use eighth cloth. The same stuff you're using on the, if, if you're like me, all my hives have eight screen bottoms. So the mites fall through and debris falls through better. That's all this is. I buy, I buy my screen on Amazon three feet width rolls by 10 feet long and it's getting pricey along with everything else joe and joe and um, barack obama are doing they're making everything miserable for uh, the entire planet uh so we got to get away from these complete corrupt fools and get prices back to where they need to be and it's all driven all of this is driven by the price of fuel okay every bit of it okay their their little agenda with climate change yeah right okay mother earth has been cooling heating cooling and heating for billions of years okay we're on a slight heating cycle did man cause this yeah right okay let's say not okay good lord guys i keep drifting off of that you know topic I don't know. They're trying to get my blood pressure up, guys, but I refuse to let them do it. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I've got to get around and get some other stuff done today. I just thought I'd quickly show you this little spring thing that you could build very quickly, and you need to do it now because you'll probably, you may not even need it. If I haven't used this in two years, or maybe it's three years now, I haven't even used it. I was on... I was with the state for a while. I was a nuisance trapper. And to throw things, to throw a little thing in there to make it more interesting, I was a um, swarm collector. Because they asked me at the state, I said, I'd like to put my name in on the nuisance, uh, uh, nuisance animal list. And uh, they said, do you want to do alligators? I said, no, no alligators. Uh, I don't want to do alligators, just raccoons, possums, and uh, honeybees. Oh, you you do honeybees? I said yes. Okay, so I started getting calls, and that's where that's where this guy came in, came in very. And the very first job, a guy woman called me. She said, "I have a swarm here." I said, "Okay, how far is it off the ground?" She said, "It's on the ground." I said, "Excuse me." She said, "Yeah, uh, it was in a little tree about." four foot off the ground and I put a cardboard box under it apparently the queen fell in there and then I just set it on the ground and all the bees came into that box that's on the ground I said how long have they been there because I had about a half an hour drive to get to her she said they've been in there about two hours I said well I said hopefully they'll still be there when I get there and no uh, sure enough they were I, th I thought sure as heck I'll get there and this has happened to me before guys get there the, the swarm had been hanging there for two days. Just as I pull in the driveway to get the swarm, they're going up in the air. They're hauling ass. Complete, complete waste of time. But anyway, I was on, I was on their list. And it's a rotational thing. There's a lot of trappers out there. You've got to go get yourself a occupational license. It wasn't much. I think it was $25. At the time, I had to have a um, trapping license from the state to trap uh, fur bears. That now, at once you hit 65 in Florida, you don't need any of that stuff anymore. You don't need hunt license. You don't need a fishing license. Uh, getting these management areas, you don't need nothing for those either. The only thing you're going to need is there's anything federal on there, like duck hunting. That's a federal thing. You have to buy special stuff for ducks and whatnot there's you are limited but not by much so anyway that's how this thing came about but with my practices that i've been doing for the last several years i haven't lost any bees to the trees none because i'm getting in there early and before they have that swarming response and i harvest i harvest resources out of these colonies to make up more colonies and if i happen to get in there and there is some swarm cells that's a plus because i'll tell you what these bees can make up 
swarm cells a heck of a lot a lot better than we humans can we have grab way to graft yada yada all that they pick that when they do it they pick the perfect age as long as there's a food source coming in and that's what triggers them in the spring there's nectar sources coming in that what triggers them to start getting ready to prepare for swarms and when they make those cells they've already made up their mind we're going to be out of here soon so if you see those they may even swarm after you go and harvest those swarm cells to make up walk away splits yeah, if you make up those cell, make up those colonies, walkaways, and you're putting those sealed peanuts in in a hive, you can come back in three weeks after that, because you've already ate up a week or so with them making a peanut. You can come back in about three weeks, peek in there, and if you don't have a queen, but they're chilling, they're like chilling out. There's usually a virgin in there. Set, put the lid back on carefully, walk away, come back in one week peek back in now if you don't have a queen back in there mated and laying eggs by then you need to redo that colony just add more resources another frame of eggs or combine combine hives and then make sure they have a frame of resources and let them do it again but i like to do it between new moon and full moon as you guys know that's the way i roll now commercial uh queen breeder he probably doesn't give uh uh two shizits about moon phases but it's just it's just a steve thing that i do i i breed try to make queens between new moon and full moon and i seem to have been having a very good luck very good luck with that so you try it do your own thing don't just do what i do because it may not work for you you know it's like it's like shooting a longbow it's like shooting a traditional longbow some people shoot three split fingers some, some shoot three under uh if i'm if i'm shooting a a uh, compound bow uh, and i have now switched over to split fingers uh with a tab years past i've been using a trigger release I found using split fingers, I can get off a shot a lot faster. If I'm shooting a longbow, I shoot three fingers under. That puts the arrow up closer to my eye, and I shoot instinctively. Uh, I'm not that good at distance that far out. I'm, I'm only talking 12, 15 yards. I'm lethal there, but with a compound they shoot so fast. I'm only shooting a 48 pound, 48 pound uh, compound bow. That's it, 48 pounds. That's plenty, plenty. You can sing an arrow slap through a deer and through a hog too if you don't hit a shoulder blade on the other side, whatever. So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, this is what we're doing. The bees are building up, guys. Spring is here, and God bless you guys for stopping in today. I hope all is well in your world. Things seem to be doing pretty good for old Steve-O. I'll see you real soon. Be happy, be strong. We got to keep getting her on. See ya.